Neil, if you had another 100 years, you'd probably take it and you would just keep being exponential Neil for the next 100 years. Yeah, but if living 100 years meant I would be constricting Earth's resources, preventing others from getting an occasion to be alive, uh, I don't know what I do or how I would do it, but you know, this is what the Eskimos did, right? The elders, there was no resources for the next generation. The elders, they, you know, you put them out on an ice floe and you bid farewell. That's cold hearted. I, I get that. But I, I, then we just make another planet. That would be, I don't have a problem with making another planet, but you can't just increase everybody's life expectancy and not have attendant resources to go with it and not birth another generation. Okay. I'll add to that uh, a point that I first saw made by Richard Dawkins, which I've elaborated further on in this book. If you look at the total number of people who have ever been born, it's about 100 billion total, all right? Um, that means nearly 10% of all people who were ever alive are alive right now. That's just an interesting fact. Yeah. But, so, uh, so... There's about 100 billion. Now you can ask, how many possible viable humans is the human genome capable of? That's an interesting question. And it is an astronomically huge number. The most conservative estimate that I put in the book is 10 to the 30th power. Right. This is a trillion, trillion, billion, trillion, trillion, relative to just simply 100 billion. All right. What does that mean? That means we get to die. What a privilege that is. Because most humans who could ever exist will never even be born. Which makes the fact that you and I and all your 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 the, your listeners and and viewers we won the lottery. We, we are alive here and now. The idea that we have state-sanctioned slaughter to end the lives of other people when this is their only time to exist in this universe, I, 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 I welled up writing about this in the, in the life and death chapter. Because once you see how precious it is to be alive at all. If you really, really understood the biology of that and the astronomical calculations related to it, you would never harm another individual in your life. You would celebrate everyone. And it's a perspective. Let's say you, this, you, you, if you some disease came upon you, or cancer, or some some deadly it's a perspective you could take even into that condition you know what that perspective is is yeah i won't live as long as others and i'm sad by that but the greatest triumph here is that i've lived at all because it's better to have lived than to have never even have been conceived i think yes that's a value judgment i'm placing on it but yeah. So when you say I'm on my deathbed, will I regret new discoveries? Yeah. Yeah, I would. But I'll understand. I celebrated discoveries in my own life. So I, I we do. I have something to show for the times that I was alive, <laughs> and I'm very proud of that. Would, would Horace Mann say you completed your mission yet? <laughs> um, perhaps. But I'm not done. Okay, I, 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 we know that. Um, <laughs> um, let me ask you a question about science, Neil. Um, you know, it's interesting how you mentioned the scientific method was kind of born around that time in the 1600s. And, or actively invoked, that yeah. is, a, is a more accurate way to say it. There, there, there are tracings of the scientific method that go back to a little bit in ancient Greece, but also and especially in the golden age of Islam. Mm -hmm. So you go back 1,300 years, um, uh, Al Hazen was a, a scholar um, of the day, scientist 
But back then, the word scientist didn't really exist. It was more a philosopher, lover of knowledge. And he he penned some words that, for all the world, read like the scientific method today, trying to warn you to not fool yourself into thinking something is true that isn't, or that something that isn't true is. So did I say that right? But well, you know what I meant. Yes. yes. <laughs> so, so, um, but yeah, 1600 is when it became widespread. Right. And you can look at changes in how we live from then onward that has no counterpart from before. So Jim Rickards has just recorded a video that's not available to anyone in the public. And he's going to be talking about how this upcoming recession is going to be fast. It's going to be bloody. It's going to be nasty. But at the same time, he's going to show you how you can position yourself to profit from all of this chaos. Now, we've made this video only available to our viewers. Go to LondonReal.tv forward slash Jim. Watch that immediately. I can't say enough good things about Jim Rickards. He understands the global economic system better than any guest I've ever had on London Real. His predictions are almost uncannily true, and you can learn how to profit from his vision, from his expertise, and his understanding of economics. So go to LondonReal.tv forward slash Jim or click the link below. It's an excellent, excellent look on what's gonna happen in the future and how you can position yourself to profit from that. Jim is one of the best in the business, one of my favorite guests on London Real, and he's very, very good at predicting the future and showing us all to profit from it. So click the link and I hope you enjoy. Hey, do you wanna profit from crypto? Then join my DeFi Academy. The Crypto DeFi Academy will help you create generational wealth. But don't take my word for it, listen to my students. When I first got into crypto, I remember thinking to myself, I need to learn more. Brian Rose, learning crypto, learning DeFi, gotta do it. I am so grateful that I jumped in and did this. I had to break through some limiting beliefs that I can do this, that I can afford this, that I can be in this. It challenges um, the things that are deeply rooted within us. Joining DeFi Academy has been one of the best decisions I have made on my blockchain journey. This course was a life changer, a game changer, a huge eye opener, coming from knowing practically nothing at the speed of the learning over the over four weeks was just fantastic. The information you provided in this class was invaluable. I feel far more confident in my next steps. You took complex concepts and made them easier to understand. What's different than so many other ones is it just doesn't tell you what to do. It uh, actually makes you do it. This is for people who are serious about becoming traders. This is the way it should be done. I realized from this learning experience again that it is not about what you learn, but about who you learn it from. The energy was insane. I've, I've never experienced such incredible energy on a live call. Brian Rose, you, you are a legend, my friend. It's the only thing in the market where you can get all information and learn everything what you need to know. Everything is so clear and so well done. And I am um, just forever grateful for this program. It made me feel so much more confident about crypto than I did before. I did not anticipate how passionate I was going to become about it. This course has been like a big learning experience for me, not just in the crypto space, but just uh, an overall uh, balance of life. What I've learned is, you know, how to take ownership, you know, of my life in a way that um, I really, I really hadn't before. Yeah, you can't put a price on that, really. I would recommend it to anybody top notch. Excellence does not come cheap. You know, so if you want excellence, you gotta pay for it, but it's so worth it. Pull the trigger. That's what this course is about. You're not gonna regret it, really. It's amazing. Thank you, Brian and team. So what are you waiting for? Crypto is happening now. Click the link below, submit your application, and let me mentor you on how to create generational wealth and build the decentralized financial infrastructure of the future.